Here three we come to the sixth in the weekly series English Cathedrals and Their Music, in which Ivor Keyes talks about the buildings and the music heard in them. Today we visit Salisbury, where the cathedral choir is conducted by the organist and master of the choir, Richard Seal, in these recordings made in 1979. What Salisbury Cathedral looks like, viewed across its waterside meadows and lawns, must be well known to some from the paintings and drawings of Constable, for instance at the Tate Gallery. Indeed it might well be said that anything chosen as a subject by Constable has already sufficient testament to its beauty. But is it not altogether exceptional, this highest spire in England standing there and queening it over its luscious surroundings since the first half of the 14th century? I say queening it because for all its great height, its wonderfully graceful proportions seem to forbid more masculine words. What an act of faith it was to put it on top of a fabric of the previous century. It's been estimated that some 6,400 tons presses down on its supports, causing the girder arches to be built which span the main transepts. I say the main transepts because in the grand and uniform design there are also shorter transepts halfway along the choir. The design and the architectural style is so uniform because, unlike many cathedrals, it was built on a brand new site without a previous building to incorporate or alter, and it was built fairly quickly, between 1220 and 1258, or soon after, that being the date when it was consecrated in the presence of King Henry III. It was Bishop Richard Poor who in 1217 gained leave of the Pope to remove his cathedral from the cramped, windswept and inconvenient fortified hilltop a few miles away to the north, which had been used by the Romans and then by the Saxons and inevitably by the Normans. We call it Old Sarum and the Saxons called it Sarisbury, both words incidentally meaning water shortage. But Old Sarum should mean something to musicians too, for its second Norman bishop, St. Osmond, founded the Song School during his reign from 1078 to 1099. And the Song School survives, serving its original educative purpose to this day, though like everything else, it is in New Sarum. So Bishop Poor had no intention or need to compromise with Norman style but started immediately with the most up-to-date, which he didn't know was going to be called Early English, nor would he have cared, of course. Uniform the architecture may be, but it is saved from monotony by the elegant way in which slender columns of dark Purbeck marble deck out the very light grey of the local limestone. It's no mean length, an impression heightened by there being no organ screen where the choir begins. While we walk this length, Let's use for introit Herbert Howells's Jubilate. It comes from the Collegium Regale, that is, King's College, set of canticles, so it cannot be said to be written for Salisbury, but it's fitting to represent Howells here, since he was, for a time, assistant organist of the cathedral. There's typical warmth of harmony at For the Lord is Gracious, and a reminder of plain song in the jubilant flowering from time to time of the melodic line what indeed would be called a jubilus in plain song. The conductor of this, and indeed all the programme, is the cathedral organist Richard Seal, with the accompaniments played by the assistant organist Colin Walsh.
The difficulties of music publishing, together with the easy dissemination of national and international music, has perhaps eroded some of the feeling that the provincial cathedral is, or should be, partly the source of its own music. But such creativity is vital to church music's health, and we now hear a setting of Jeju Dulcis Memoria by Richard Shepard, who is a Salisbury lay clerk. The words are from a hymn ascribed to St. Bernard, and if they are by him, they are certainly earlier than anything you can see in Salisbury Cathedral. Jeju, the very thought is sweet. Next, a very different sort of hymn setting by Walter Stanton. He was one of the most distinguished ex-choristers of Salisbury, and although he never professionally entered the cathedral world again, Salisbury's influence on him was just as indelible as his was on other people, and a great many other people it was. He was head of music at two major schools, and at Reading and Bristol universities, but in his time with the BBC, he introduced, through their Midland singers, many treasures of cathedral music, especially the Renaissance, to a far wider public, at a time when, though the music was published, it was by no means much recorded, let alone sung elsewhere. The words, set with freedom and passion, are Jesus, lover of my soul. 
some very surprising modulations occur in a verse not often sung. Just and holy is thy name. I am all unrighteousness.
Another former assistant organist, Richard Lloyd, now at Durham, is the composer of the next anthem, which is unaccompanied, to words by the Elizabethan poet, come musician, come physician, Thomas Campion. The first verse of which runs, View me, Lord, a work of thine. Shall I then lie drowned in night? Might thy grace in me but shine, I would seem made all of light. The present organ is a direct descendant of the one built by Henry Willis in 1877 and remains, in the opinion of many, one of the finest examples of his work. It replaced an organ given to the cathedral by George III. By way of interlude, Colin Walsh will now play a voluntary in D by Boyce. It's in the two movements usually implied by the title. A sober prelude on foundation stops, followed by a favourite kind of lively movement, a trumpet tune with alternations of colour.
Michael Wise, who was organist of Salisbury Cathedral from 1668 to 1687, was a good composer, still perhaps an underrated one, but as far as Dean and Chapter were concerned, was a lazy, quarrelsome and refractory man. He seems, however, to have been a favourite of Charles II's. Wise must have come to Charles's notice through being a choir boy in the Chapel Royal Choir as reconstituted by Captain Cook at the Restoration in 1660. But soon after his arrival at Salisbury there are fines, quite hefty ones, for non-attendance and other irregularities. In 1674 he was rash enough to accuse the Dean and Chapter of embezzling money due to him and the choir an accusation which he humbly retracted twelve days later. But in 1683, the boots again on the other foot, the chapter charged him thus, that Mr. Michael Wise, the organist of this church, is very shamefully and contemptuously negligent in the performance of his duty in this church, and that he, the said Wise, doth lie and labour under a notorious fame of profaneness intemperate drinking and other excesses in his life and conversation to the great scandal of religion and the government of this church. It's difficult to know who had the worst record, Wise at Salisbury or Wilkes at Chichester, but perhaps Wise's death tips the balance. Using stubborn and refractory language, he fought with a night watchman who retaliated and broke his skull with a billhook. But all the same, the two anthems by Wise you are to hear both got into the Hall of Fame by being printed in the collection of cathedral music that the composer Boyce published in the next century. The first is Prepare Ye the Way, a well-varied mixture of solo voices and chorus with settings of such words as And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and But the word of the Lord endureth forever which stand comparison with other famous composers.
Wise's second anthem is Blessed is he that considereth the poor and needy, notable for its expressive duet and trio writing. Next, a wedding anthem dedicated to the choir in 1959 by Gerald Finzi. The words are from the 18th century sacramental meditations of an Edward Taylor. My lovely one, I fain would love thee much. Lord, 
melts me all up into love for thee, whose loveliness excels what love can be. For a contrast in wedding music, here is Walton's Set Me As A Seal Upon Thy Heart, written for a society wedding in 1938, but rightly taken into more general use, including as it does such famous words as many waters cannot quench love, and showing incidentally the sort of demanding work a cathedral choir can take into today's repertoire.
You may well ask how Enrico Bossi, whose dates are 1861 to 1925, comes to be in a program devoted to English cathedrals. One reason could be that for a long time organists were devoted to him, and especially his scherzo in G minor, which you are now to hear. But quite apart from its occasional dashing harmony, it serves well to show the authentic growl of Willis Reeves and the fiery brilliance of his tutties. The player is again Colin Walsh.
pride of place for the final music goes to Sir Walter Alcock, organist from 1916 until his death in 1947. He insistently supervised the Willis rebuild in 1934. He was one of the foremost players and teachers of his day, carrying the virtuosity of the 19th century into the 20th and adding to it considerable musical insights. He had the distinction of playing at the coronations of King Edward VII, George V and George VI. And we hope that this concluding piece, the Sanctus which he wrote for George V's coronation, will show with other things in this programme that the cathedral compose-it-yourself tradition is alive and worthwhile. This afternoon's programme in the series English Cathedrals and Their Music featured Salisbury Cathedral. The Cathedral Choir was conducted by Richard Seal and the organ solos and accompaniment were provided by Colin Walsh. The programme included the following music. Jubilati from Collegium Regale by Howells, which was followed by Jesu Dulcis Memoria by Richard Shepherd. Jesu, Lover of My Soul by Stanton and View Me, Lord by Richard Lloyd. Then came the first of the organ solos. Colin Walsh played Voices Voluntary in D and this was followed by two pieces by Michael Wise. Prepare Ye the Way and Blessed is He that Considereth the Poor and Needy. My Lovely One by Finzi and Walton's Set Me as a Seal preceded the second solo organ item, Boss's Scherzo in G minor. And the programme finished with the Sanctus from the Coronation Service for King George V by Sir Walter Alcock. The programme was presented by Ivor Keyes, and next week, at about the same time, 10 to 4, we'll be featuring Durham Cathedral. <laughs>